This video is part of our course on PySide 6 for widgets, which is on Udemy. The course goes from the absolute beginning, showing you how you can take advantage of Qt widgets using the Python API under the PySide 6 or Qt for Python umbrella. And it covers things you really need on a daily basis, signals and slots, a bunch of widgets you can use. We show you how to use Qt Designer. At the end, we also show you how to work with networks and the model view architecture. If you are interested, be sure to check the link in the description below. In this lecture, we're going to see how you can get the most out of the course here. And there is really no magic pill you can take to get the knowledge from the course. The tried and true way is to follow along, watch the videos, try to practice the things I do in the course, try to modify the code and make it yours. And that's really how you are going to get the most out of the course here. Another thing I would recommend is to use the Qt examples. So if you go to the browser, for example, and uh, search for Qt examples, I think they have a lot of examples. You can uh, browse to this link. They will show you tons and tons of examples. And this is a way you can get full running applications you can try out. Most of these are going to be for C++, but once you have the fundamentals in this course, you will have the necessary basics to try and understand what is going on here. If you go down and you see examples for Qt widgets, for example, if we open the text editor example here, or the model view example, you will see that you can build something like this. And this is something we even build in our course here, but uh, that's going to be in Python. You can learn about the model view architecture. You can really do all kinds of crazy things through these examples here. So if you have an idea, come to the Qt examples, see if there is something similar, try to build on top of that. This is the best way I can recommend to even learn Qt by yourself without even needing a course like this. But if you are a beginner, the documentation like this can be hard to understand. You still need the basics. This course is going to give you the basics to allow you to take advantage of this. But start trying to browse through these examples now and see what you can pick up or even identify the things you need to focus on in the course here. Once you have the knowledge, you can come back and use it. Another thing I recommend is to use the source code that is going to be provided in the course here. The link is going to be shared at each lecture. So if you want, you can go to the lecture, download the source code and use that however you want. Another thing I would recommend is asking questions if you get stuck. The course platform provides a mechanism to ask questions. So you can ask a question. I will try to respond as best as I can. So take advantage of that if you get stuck. We also have a bunch of groups on Facebook and Discord. You can join and uh, help each other out. That's a really good way to learn and to find people who are going through the same thing. Take advantage of all these channels to make the most out of the course here. I want you to be successful in using PySide 6 to build cross-platform desktop applications. Now that you know this, it is time we headed over to the next lecture and started setting up the environment for building PySide 6 applications in no time. Go ahead and finish up here and meet me there.